What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com, back with another SketchUp plugin tutorial. So yesterday I introduced you to the uh, Soap Skin extension. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to use that to create a uh, fancy organic um, shade structure. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So um, first thing I'm going to do, and I'll pull the picture over here, is just kind of get an idea of this shape and how we want to draw it. So basically the way that we're going to do this is if you take a look at this shape, it's basically an octagon. It's got eight sides around the base. So we're going to start off and we're just going to draw an octagonal shape. So let's go ahead and you could do that by activating the circle tool and then typing an eight and hitting the enter key and you can see on the corner here it says sides eight so what that means is it'll draw an eight sided circle or an octagon so that's how we're going to start and actually i'm going to do this a little more to scale um, you don't have to you can resize it later but um i'm going to go ahead and do that so let's say it's got a 10 foot radius and now if you look at this picture the way that this works is it's got a tall support and then a short support and then a tall support and it just kind of goes around in the circle just like that so um, what we're gonna do is let's go ahead and lead off and just kind of draw our support points um, and I'm gonna say that uh, probably these tall ones are just for the sake of what we're doing let's say we've got 12 feet and we've got 8 feet so you're just going to draw a pair of lines just like this. So you see one of them's tall and one of them's short. And what we're going to do now that we've done that is we're going to draw an arc between the two of them just like this. And basically what we're doing is we're drawing the uh, we're drawing the basis for what we're going to use soap skin to create our skin over. So you can go ahead and use the arc to set these two points. And then uh, you can just kind of drag this you can put your mouse over the uh, far the far midpoint of this point right here because all you need to do is you can type in something like three feet and hit that enter key and you can see what that did is that created an inward arc along here and actually you know what I'm gonna do this to two feet so just move your mouse to about here type in two feet and hit the enter key you see how that gives us this uh, this kind of arcing line right now well now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the move tool and we're gonna move a copy of this out to the side and then we're gonna flip it using the scale tool so just like this just drag it until it's at negative one so now it's flipped you could probably uh, right click and flip along the uh, green or the the green or the red axis I'm not sure which one at this point but what you do is you come in here now and you can see you've got this now that you've done that you've got this so that it uh sorry you've you've got it mirrored so that this support point right here um hits this tip at exactly 12 feet so it's exactly what we're looking for right now and uh next thing i'm going to do because my rotate tool gets a little funky on my computer is i'm going to save a copy of this all right so now that i got my copy saved what i'm going to do is i'm going to come in here and i'm going to select these right here so i'm going to select these three lines and then i'm going to use the rotate tool to just copy them so just create one copy and then type in times three and you see what that does is that takes your skin and it takes it all the way around this all the way around this uh octagonal shape just like this and so what we've done is we've created kind of our general framework for this piece you can see how this curves kind of the same way that this does so we've got our we've got our uh, framework done now you're going to go up here and you're gonna select all of these top lines just like this so drag a box around them like i just did and just select the top lines don't select the supports right now and then what you're going to do is you're going to go to your soap skin and bubble extension and you're going to click generate soap skin just like this and what it's going to do is it's going to ask you how many divisions it wants and basically that that means it's asking how many times you want to divide this uh, if you type in a lower number then it'll create um, less divisions but it'll also be a um, a more blocky shape if you type in more then it'll take it longer because it has to do more math to figure out all these faces um, I'm gonna go ahead and put this at 20 because I want this to be pretty smooth so what you do is with this active you type in 20 and hit the enter key and you can see what this is going to do is it's going to come through and it's going to do all the math to figure out where your tensile structure stuff goes. 
So, and then it starts kind of moving everything along the perimeter just like this, and then it'll get smooth. So you can see now you've got your basic tensile structure right here. So, so now that you've got your basic tensile structure, what we need to remember, well, first of all, you can come in here. I actually kind of like the way that this looks, but you can come in here with the bubble function and uh, you can adjust the pressure in here. And when you adjust the pressure, uh, you see how it kind of pushes this piece out just like this. Um, you know, if I was to take this and do something a little higher, like 50, it's going to push this whole thing up a little bit more. So we, we obviously don't want that right now, but you do have the option to come in here and do that. And I'll just set that back to zero and it'll just drop this back down. I actually like the way that this looks. It's probably about perfect. So the next thing we're going to do is you can't, so you can't just draw a circle on this face like this because it's not 100% flat. So, because what we want to do is we want to draw our circle in here so that we can create kind of the hole for the sun to shine down through. So, the way that we're going to do that is we're actually going to come up here and we're going to draw our circle a little bit higher. So you can draw kind of a guideline up above. And then, um, I would say probably set your circle to a... I'd say a 24-sided circle. It may be a little more work for you to come in here and fix everything later, but go ahead and draw a 24-sided circle and draw it to whatever the size is that you want. Draw it to whatever the size is that you want um, your shade circle to be. So in this case, let's try it here. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use uh, the drape function of the sandbox tools. So um, sandbox tools is something that ships as a part of your SketchUp uh, default installation. You may have to go turn that on. So I think you can turn that on by coming into your extension manager and just, um, and just loading sandbox tools. So if you come in here you see how it says sandbox tools right here. Your default installation may have this set as disabled. So just click this so this is enabled. And anytime you start working with sandbox tools, make sure you save a copy of your model because it can create a little bit of instability. But basically what we're going to do now is we've got our circle drawn and we're going to use the drape tool to drape it down over this face. So select your face just like this and then click on drape and just click on your face right down here. And you can see what that did is that draped all but this little point right here, uh, right over this face. So you can see that actually follows the contours of this, uh, this piece. Well, now what you can do is you can come in here and you probably need to finish the circle off, but now you can come in here and you can start erasing these lines. And when you do that, what you're gonna be left with is you're gonna be left with your circle along your tensile structure. So just come in here with the erase tool and start erasing lines. And if you get most of the ones around the perimeter, then you can come back and uh, do a right to, or a, yeah, right to left select. And you can select the rest of these and just come in here and you can erase them just like this. So it gets really fast to erase everything. So now what you've got is you've got your tensile structure with the circle on the inside of it. You can go ahead and erase your guide right here and we're pretty much done with this piece up here right now um, well that's not true there's one thing we're gonna do so we're gonna right click on this section we're gonna come down to this soften and smooth edges option and you can see what that does is that pops up that pops up this little soften edges piece over here in your tray and what you want to do you can see how you can you can drag this little uh, you can drag this little slider and it'll reduce the number of lines that are shown in here. But what we want to do is we want to check this box that says soften coplanar as well. So then drag this across and you can see now we've got a nice smooth shape. It doesn't have a whole lot of lines and segments and stuff like that. So now if we, uh, you may still have to come in here manually and hide a couple a couple little lines are in here. You can just activate the erase tool and then hold the shift key and drag it across them. But so now, as you can see, what you've got here is you've got your tensile structure, you've hidden most of your, uh, you've hidden most of your lines in here, and you've got the circle in it. So pretty much exactly what we're looking for. And what we're gonna do later is we'll come in here and we'll turn shadows on. And when you turn shadows on, you can adjust the way that that works. 
But the last thing I want to do before we do that, so because remember, shadow slows down your model, is I want to come in here and I actually want to create some actual posts. So let's say this is probably a, we can make these two inch posts. But I want to create a post and I want to extrude it up to the top right here for each one of these. So, and what you can do is you can uh, right click on this and make it a component and we can just talk, call this tall post. We can take this one, draw a two inch circle, extrude it up. You may need to click and drag across it, but you can make this a component and we can call this one short post. And then we're just gonna do the same thing we did before. Um, and again, usually whenever you're using the rotate tool to make copies, just make sure you save a copy of your model. But then you can come in here with the rotate tool and probably the best way to do it is just to do it over here. You can just make a copy in a circle, type in times three, and there you go. Um, and you can come in here, and uh, if you're gonna come in here and make this a component, it's a good idea to drag a box across it instead of double clicking like I did, just to make sure that you get everything that's in it. So click in here, click make, make component, call it tall post. What you can do is you can come in here and you can hide all of these and then erase these lines. It's probably a better idea to just erase the lines when you start, but I forgot to do that. So the nice thing about the way the structure is in here now is you can come in here, you can color it up with different materials. So if you decide you want it to be a different color, like some kind of blue or green color, you can come in here and do that. And then you can come in here and you can turn your shadows on just like this and you can adjust the way that the shadow falls in here so you can adjust the time of year you can adjust the time of day um, until that kind of looks the way that you want it to look anyway that's just a quick easy way to come in here and create a uh, tensile structure or tensile shade structure with the hole in the center um, leave a comment below let me know what you thought did you like this tutorial did you not uh, remember i'm trying to teach more uh like principles and stuff like that like things that uh things that'll help you get better at SketchUp, just to kind of give you ideas and that kind of thing. So even if you're not drawing like tensile structures, you'll probably find another use for this extension. So make sure you go download that. So if you like this video, remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, click that subscribe button. I'll be coming out with new SketchUp stuff every week. I'd love to have you along for the ride. If you really like what I'm doing, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Um, every little bit helps, even if it's a dollar a month, just to help me keep bringing you great SketchUp content. Um, in any case, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.